Yes. Have you had it created? Is it I real? did. Is I had it created um, by my cover designer, Mark Reed. Uh-huh. And we kind of went back and forth. And basically, I told him how I describe it in the book. And that's what he came up with, his, his own images. And I was like, that's it. It's perfect. He did all the covers. And I mean, I think he did this in one go. And uh, he, da- he did not have to do any revisions. I was like, that's it. And he didn't give you multiple samples. He just said, here it is. Here it is. And you're like, yes. And this, yeah. Um, I think we did maybe two with that one. And then... This one was the hardest one, Tree of Souls, for me to get right for him. Why is that? Um, well, there's a lot of things that play into the tree and the design, and that takes place at the end of the book, so I can't tell you exactly Okay. all of it. Because yeah. the, the, the picture shows a lot on that. The tree of Souls is the third yes. one. Yes, yes. And it's interesting how it got thicker and thicker. Was that <laughs> I intentional know. or... No, not intentional. It just was the story that came out, and that just flowed out of me, and it needed to be... How many times did you get locked up? How many times did you say, I... The first book, like, continually. Really? First book, because I didn't know what I was doing. When I, I was a newbie. Um, I didn't even know how to write, really. It's all just learning process, and draft after draft after draft, you make it into a book. But, yeah, I, there was a, so many hang-ups at the beginning. Writer's block. What did you do with writer's yeah. block? Oh, that's funny. I get asked this question a lot, and I always tell the young young viewers out there how to get out of writer's block, and that's by just plowing through it. Uh, you just you just keep doing it. You never you skip. force it there anyway. Yeah. yeah. You don't skip over. Did you do it literally no. like you like next, next? Yeah. Next. So basically, the way I work is I have to work in order, uh-huh. so I could not jump out of order. I know some writers are a lot different in that respect, but I'm kind of one of those must do it in order, must get it done. So. If, if if I struggled on one chapter, then I struggled for, like, sometime months. Sometimes I would put one book one down for, like, months at a time. We're talking three to six months. That's wow. why it took so long. Can you give me an analogy? Like, she's got to get out of this house. She's just got to get out. <laughs> How did she get out of the house? How? Well, actually, that sounds right. That oh, sounds no. Right. No, <laughs> no um, like, an example on book one was probably I tried and tried. Okay, so... There's a certain character, Alistair, who comes in, and he's kind of Lorna's love interest. But Corinth is also her love interest at the beginning. But Corinth is her best friend, and he's kind of always been by her since they were really young. They live, like, a block apart. And so he's always liked her, but she just never... She could never love herself enough to realize that he did like her. Does that make sense? So oh, she was one of those characters okay. that she had a lot of growth to go through. So for me, writing in Alistair... Because I always wanted Corinth and Lorna to get together, but it did not happen that way. And I tried and tried and tried to get those two together, and it just didn't happen. So Alistair popped out of nowhere, and I had to give him his due as far as, like, I, at the very beginning, I never I never gave him character. Okay. And I think because I never gave him character, um, it took me so long to get past that. And finally I realized, oh, I'm not doing him justice. So once I started doing him justice, writing him, it all clicked. It came into place, and that's when it it just worked. Now, was there any side stories where you, they did come together? Corinth and Lorna, yeah. or yeah? Did you ever just write that? Just like yes. Yeah, so, uh, um, is there I, a test bed out there? Like, if you imagine, you imagine having that segment laying off to the side, you're like you never deleted it, but you had it as a reference because you you must have written something that said they got together. They did. I I actually did not because it just wouldn't. My characters would not listen to me. Okay. <laughs> the more I tried to write it, the the worse it it, it got. It just so. too cheesy. It was like all of a sudden. But it just didn't work. So yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it was cheesy, but it didn't work, and it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. I had to introduce that third character, which is Alistair. So yeah. just her and him and Corinth, that or her and Corinth, did not end up together, which is pretty crazy. The way it ends up like that. Sometimes your characters tell you what they want to do mm-hmm. and not vice versa so yeah um, I know a friend of mine has got a writer's block right now on one particular character not knowing what to name them mm-hmm. and not knowing mm-hmm. what that person's going to do and you're just like just let them do something right Call so something. my my advice yeah is to keep moving on and get past that and revisit it later mm-hmm. and the more drafts I went through the more I'm like oh this is what I need to do so it'll come it, it'll come to you it's just going to take some time okay and yeah. did you did you ever have that situation like well, I'll just call him Andrew and, and he wields a, an arm a, a machete just keep going come on and then you're like you come back you're like no, pretty no, much no, pretty no. much he's gonna have a sword and his name is gonna be Arnold 
you know like does that ever happen i would think i'm sure it's happened but i'm you've never done it for me it's more like i'll give them a weapon but if i do some i might give them another weapon or might yeah i might i might add on to it so you should kind of go with my first instinct when it comes to that but it's not it's not it's it's a rare occasion where you go back a couple chapters like it should have been a it should have been a machine gun instead of a machete yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's times, yeah, of course. I mean, you're going to run across inconsistencies. You're like, well, yeah. he wouldn't have this here in this part, or why did he have this, or, yeah. But it's interesting that you built your characters and you knew them enough that they're like, what are you, retarded? I'd never do that. <laughs> like yelling at you. Um, yeah, pretty much. pretty much. Because it doesn't work. The more you write it, the worse it, it comes off, and then all of a sudden you're having to go and rewrite everything, and... Yeah. Are you a fan of Supernatural? I love Supernatural. Oh, Are you kidding? Yeah, I've been. I've, so like been this book series okay. is like is like part Supernatural, I think. Oh, you kidding? I'm not kidding. Part Supernatural, CW Supernatural meets um, Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments. So. No way. Yeah, but you don't like Supernatural, or? Uh, I, I I like it enough. You like it I enough, like okay? It, but not You're in the now. hot seat now. Yeah, exactly. Not now. Where, where um, was it? Is it Charlie or God? Are you watching? Oh, God. You know no, I know. I'm watching it, too, and I'm, <laughs> I am know I want to like it. I, I'm like, you guys. Don't what are you writer. doing? Yes. Let's go, go hunt something. Oh, I love you. Love you, Supernatural. But, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Maybe there's some kind of overall arc that they're going to do, but um, I, I'm not happy with the whole Charlie thing. Yeah, and now anything can happen so much that they're like, I swear, it's the Pretty writer. Pretty much. The writer. It's not, yeah. it's not Charlie. It's well, not God. It's the writer. Writers, yes. It's the writers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You bastards. How dare you open the... <laughs> and I'm just like... No, I, I am right there with you okay. uh, to just to throw opinions out there. Um, I love Supernatural. I'm a, I'm a huge fan, but I'm this last season i'm like what the, what are y'all doing i can't remember his name but stop name. making all the angels and the god bad guys and stop making all the yeah the demons them. all the good guys i mean i get it i get I'm like hell now I'm, i was really good but now I'm, this place is even better what what what's going on here oh uh, yeah it's so clean um, in hell it's like right yeah yeah it's like <laughs> well Where's all the yelling and the torturing? Uh, no, I, um, it's no, I'm 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 100 on the same page as you. The lead guy, I can't remember his name. Jensen Ackles, yeah. Jensen Ackles or yeah. Jerry Padalecki? I think it's the Jerry guy. He got, Jared. He was yeah. drunk in the Austin bar here recently. Mm-hmm. Heard about yeah, this. yeah, stereotype. Um, yeah. Uh, Jessica and I were also uh, talking about how there's these women that aren't very attractive or are not a uh, that they're on the show, and the attractive ones usually get killed off. In that, uh, what's his name? His character's got that uh, death girl because she's not a, she's not uh, gonna take away from the women viewers. Like she's not a competition at all. Oh gosh, they, that's like, a... a theory about that. Do you think? I don't know. That's, I think that's why they wrote it because she seems like ah, she's not. She's she's. I like, thought well, the actually, living what female in the ship in the show? Or no, because <laughs> I, I I actually disagree with you. I think oh, um, okay. I think she's. I like her, first of all. I think she's gorgeous. But um, I think um, I think the reason why they did that was because they wanted poor Sam to finally get his uh, yeah. his family in the end. You know, he uh, he's been through a lot, and I think yeah. I think the the best thing that they could do for that series right now, you know, what would flip everybody, yes, what, what, what? flip it on their their heads. What? You know, would be to put them on a beach somewhere and have them on vacation or something. I just want to see them go on vacation once. Yeah. To relax. Yeah, relax. Yeah. And not fighting any demons. They should have just made this whole season, like, them on a beach. Demonless. On a yeah, beach. Yeah, on a beach. But not just a... Uh, Demonless. Demonless. That should have been, like, the name of it. Oh! That would have been cool. What would they do? What did they just do regular investigations? And yeah. They, they'd kill regular people, like, demon style. I wouldn't say kill them, but, like, what if... <laughs> what if it's, like... I don't. I don't know. I'd do something... I, I mean, you'd have to have some sort of tension in there, but I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't... Yeah, uh, I'd make I, them on a beach somewhere and kind of give them what they wanted for a little bit, maybe for a couple of weeks at I'm least. Not, I'm sure you're a Lost fan, right? No, you're not. No, I'm Didn't not a Lost you. fan. Wow. No, I had to stop watching. And you know why I'm not a Lost why fan? Because they never answer any questions. They just kept raising them more, and that really frustrates me. I mean, you can do that to me. You yeah. can raise questions, but please answer the ones you've already done. So mm-hmm. for me, that was when they didn't—they did that over too long of a time. Um, you lose me. Right. 
Yeah. Like there, there, uh, therein lies no explanation. Yeah, they lost me. I was like, I only have so much patience to give you what guys. What did they lose you? What season? I think two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, six seasons. That's a.